all the transcripts and uh, all those things we said about them kissing people on the anus and pissing on the cross and all that. Forget about it. You know, we, we exonerate the Templars completely. It was found out that you know, Mr. Uh, Hitler Youth from Bavaria, where the Illuminati was formed, uh, was investigating in the Illuminati and the Templars long before they came out and said, we found this mysterious document that exonerates the, the Templars. So according to the Vatican, the Templars are okay again. No worries there. So who is this man we call the president? I'm doing a story on space-based weaponry and uh, the coupling of DOD with NASA. This is how I started my Obama investigation. And I'm trying to understand how this um, fits into Warner Von Braun's predictions. And so what this is is an X-band radar. This is a radar that was on uh, an oil rig that was shipped out of Texas just a day before Katrina hit. Everybody forgot about the X-band radar after that. <laughs> what the X-band radar does is it, it scans the system for barium. It can detect barium in any system. It can track barium all over the planet. And then we have the HARP facility over here. And the HARP is an antenna array in Gakona, Alaska, which I have a film about. You can watch on my website. You can get it here at the bookstore. Uh, HARP is an antenna array that shoots ultra-low frequency waves into the ionosphere, and with that they can manipulate uh, different frequency modulations, causing earthquakes, causing floods. As a matter of fact, the USA Today reported, Milosevic accuses U.S. of using HARP technologies to cause earthquakes and floods in the Middle East. Yeah. Front page of the USA Today. My problem is that they don't database the USA Today. So because I did not collect and hold all those papers from 1999 and 90s, uh, I don't have the evidence to show you. Nobody databases the USA Today. Mm -hmm. But they've given all these Masonic clues and secret symbols, and I tell you straight out that Milosevic was accusing U.S. of using this technology to cause earthquakes and floods. And so what is happening is we're all being chemtrailed, right? We all know this, right? We see the grid pattern, but what is it for? Well, two of the main ingredients within the chemtrails is aluminum and barium. So one is so that you're tracked by the X-band radar, which left out of here just before Katrina, went all the way around Central America to set up next to the Hart facility in Alaska, where Governor Palin is, right? Uh, and then, of course, the Hart facility runs on a, a radio frequency uh, er, waves, uh, using ultra-low radio frequency waves, so the aluminum in your system has now made you a perfect antenna. So now you are a perfect component for these two systems to work against you. All of this was put together and is now housed in uh, Cheyenne Mountain, which is the, the home of the Missile Defensive Shield. And when they announced that they were moving the Missile Defensive Shield to Cheyenne Mountain, which if any of you are familiar with Stargate, uh, that is Space Command. That is Cheyenne Mountain where the Missile Defensive Shield was put. That's Colorado Springs. Uh, as soon as they announced that the Cheyenne Mountain or Missile Defensive Shield would be put in a Cheyenne Mountain, a, a rocket burnt throughout our atmosphere, and I watched this as it happened, and uh, it miraculously was heading to a missile silo at the time. Uh, I have a friend with a $2 million home in a missile silo, and this big burning apparatus just looked like the Empire State Building burning across the atmosphere came across. I thought we were under attack, because building a Missile Defensive Shield, a HARP facility, a, a force field. We now have a force field. This is against the SALT II Treaty. This is against the Strategic Arms Limitation Mutual Destruction. This is saying, okay, now we've got a force field we can launch and you can't launch back. Because HARP can shut off all electronics in specific. So we do have a missile defensive shield. But all of this starts to sound a bit like a sci-fi story. But how close are these sci-fi stories to reality? Can we call this predictive programming? I just have you notice that these are the SG-1 characters. This is the Obama administration. Can you tell me the difference? Okay. Yeah, we got, yeah. We got Biden, who fits in the Obama bin Biden uh, story there. And we've got Bernanke, the guy who forced them to sign the 1013 document. Right? We've got the governor of Alaska, who's in charge of the HARP facility. And, of course, the Secretary of State, who's trying to push for UFO disclosure. And we've got our nemesis, who, in the Stargate trilogy, or Stargate story of Stargate Atlantis, is known as Apophis. Okay? So, how close is this to reality? 
Apophis is the ancient Egyptian Satan. He is the serpent dark lord that tries to eat Ra every night. He is the, the, the great lord of evil. He is Satan. He is the original Satan because Akhenaten created the original monotheism. So you have the, the cult of Aten, which is the sun god, the one and true god. If you watch Battlestar Galactica, that's the Cylon's god. And then you've got the, the uh, adversary, the satanic force, which he calls Apophis. Well, it was originally a pep in Egypt, but in Greek it's Apophis, which is the character in Stargate 1. This was all begun by Akhenaten. He began this first monotheistic religion. Uh, so now I've got Obama connected to Apophis, and I'm looking at a space war coming. I'm watching as I'm telling people they're going to use meteors. They're going to use meteors to bring about. The, the, the weaponization of space. I was discussing this in January. In March, a meteor almost hit the planet. March 2nd. It was noticed three days prior to its possible impact. It did not impact the planet. But just as uh, Warner Von Braun had been saying, and just as I had been saying, all of a sudden it was big news. All of a sudden we needed to come up with an agenda, an idea, of a way to uh, combat the coming problem. Uh, so there is a space command, there is a United States Space Force. They have been in existence for a long, long time. You can find space battle labs and all of this as they're getting ready for the weaponization of space. Okay, so we have this asteroid come in, and they say, oh, well, now we've got to deal with this threat. We've got a big problem. We're having uh, an issue, and we need to deal with it. And there are now two fighting factions on determining how to stop Apophis from hitting planet Earth. <laughs> so as I'm tracking asteroids, and I'm tracking Obama, and the coupling of the space-based weaponry, and the use of asteroids to further the weaponization of space, now all of a sudden they announce, well, we have this big problem, we're going to couple with the Russia-China Space Force to conquer Apophis. Which just happened to be Akhenaten's Satan, the spirit of evil and destruction. And it came from a group of asteroids known as the Aten. <laughs> so that means we're not going to all die in 2012 because they have to save us so we can die. Yeah, in 2019. Uh, actually, or 2029 is when it comes, and it will arrive on Friday the 13th, 2029. And so right now they're getting ready, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do about Apophis and how they're going to uh, coordinate the efforts of the world to save us from this coming threat. And uh, so Jet Propulsion Laboratories is saying, well, we need to nuke it. We need to nuke it. And the other uh, astronauts in the uh, ASC, uh, this Astronomical Society, they're saying, no, 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 we have technology that can nudge that thing out of way. There's no need to nuke it. And they're all going, you're crazy. We need to nuke it. We need to get weapons in space. So in trying to understand the Obama's bloodline, I was trying to put this piece together. And um, there were some weird symbolic gestures. Now, <laughs> the Queen came up and put her arm around Michelle Obama during the G20 meeting when they met at the palace. This has never happened before. The queen does not touch people, and nobody touches the queen. They're, 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 you know, God. You're not allowed to touch her. But the queen initiated the contact. She put her arm around Michelle. Well, this seemed to fall right into my theories, because uh, as I began to look into this study... consider this for a minute. Great music. Thank you. That's a friend of mine that uh, does that. 
I have known all my life that there was more on planet Earth, that there was more going on, that there were ancient civilizations such as Atlantis and Lemuria that only the Freemasons write about. If you want to find out about Atlantis or Lemuria, you got to go to Freemasonic author. You're just not going to find any information because this is their history. This is their religion. This is why they are so interested in the man wife writing about fish people from Sirius. The Masons, well, the, when you understand the ancient civilization and the height of the technological advancements that they had, then you'll find out that